Um, story Bonnie and Clyde, almost acceptable, except the fact that the 1968 version of this story, which had been filmed before as a Bonnie Parker story, uh, so the 1967 version, with Faye Dunaway and Warren Beatty, is perfect. I mean, that's a hell of a, a movie. It's a wonderful recreation of that period, of the Great Depression. Um, I don't think we really need another version of this story. But lo and behold, we're doing it. It's called The Story of Bonnie and Clyde. It's coming out this year. Hilary Duff is Bonnie. Okay, uh, say what you will. The Coens are doing true grit. Um, now, that, that's acceptable. I, I don't mind that as much. Um, Butch and Sundance, uh, Butch Cassidy and Sundance Kid was rumored to be remade. A couple of years back, there was talk of uh, Ben Affleck and Matt Damon doing that, but clearly that's not happening. But then Footloose is being remade as a musical. Um, actually, I think Broadway had a version of the musical, so now it's going to be the musicalized version. But I, I can't imagine who's clamoring for that. I don't know, maybe somebody is. Of course, they did the same thing with the producers. Uh, Hellraiser is being remade. The Howling, known as The Howling Reborn. Rock and Roll High School is in development. Who's remaking that? Why? That, that makes no sense to me at all. Uh, especially when the Ramones were in it. Of course, they're not around anymore, so I don't know what band can match that. Um, okay, so other remakes uh, that have existed, but uh, some quite good. Cape Fear is a fantastic remake by Martin Scorsese, uh, of the classic film with Robert Mitchum and Gregory Peck. It's much more noirish, much more pulpy. It's, I thought, you know, it, that was a terrific you know, film. It uh, fleshed out the original, I think, completely and added all kinds of psychological layers. Um, the Departed was a remake of Infernal Affairs. Of course, I'm not even going to get into the, all the horror films. American remake, uh, uh, horror, horror, American horror remakes of Japanese horror films, including uh, The Ring, which was originally called Ringu in Japan, uh, The Eye, and so on, might even get into all that. Um, Fame was remade. Of course, going back in the 80s, we had To Be or Not To Be, which was also a remake on Faithfully Yours. Um, Love Don't Cost a Thing. This was a 2003 remake of a movie that most people, I thought, forgot about or didn't care to remember. Can't Buy Me Love, but it was remade. Uh, the Lady Killers, again by the Coens, quite a good film. Original probably is better, but the remake has its own style, its own tone. Uh, that, to me, see, is it's acceptable, especially the original is not really perfect. I th always think is this, if a film is perfect as it is and doesn't need to be remade, don't bother. Like Psycho, Gus Van Sant remade that. What is the point? Vince Vaughn was in it. It was color in color, and it really just took too much away from what the original did so well, which was it gave you some sympathy and empathy for the Norman Bates character, which Vince Vaughn just was too seems too creepy for me to play that character and develop any sort of empathy. Um, and I, I think I already mentioned the crazies. That was a Roger Romero. Roger, uh, Roger, I said Roger, George Romero, 1973 film, which became sort of a cult film. It wasn't a box office success, and it's remade. And then I almost thought that Season of the Witch, which is coming out with Nicolas Cage, uh, is a whole different story. But uh, there was a George Romero film called Season of the Witch. I almost thought that was a remake, but it's not. So what do we gather from all of this? Um, I don't know. All I can say is we need, perhaps, to start doing more original films in Hollywood. Um, a version of Catcher in the Rye would be nice if they can clear the rights. There's a forgotten Kip Koenig film uh, called How to Make the Coolest Month with Clea Duvall. I had interviewed the director, Kip Koenig, way back in 1998. And um, the film is still yet to be released. It was shown at a film festival or two, and that was it. Um, but do something original. Napoleon Dynamite, who came up with that? Came out of nowhere. It was really, really unique. So it was Slumdog Millionaire. Uh, Milk, finally, they found the nerve, Hollywood, to finance a film, Sean Penn, as Harvey Milk. All we had before that was a documentary called The Times of Harvey Milk. Um, I think there are all kinds of projects that can be done. 
and they're just not doing them. And either they're not doing them or they're not getting the financing. Slumdog Millionaire nearly went just straight to DVD. It would never have been shown in a theater had an American just distributor not picked it up. So um, I often would say this, uh, do something original. Granted, all the stories have been told. You know, Roger Ebert says it's not about how, uh, it's not about what, uh, what a film is about, it's how it's about. In other words, how it's made. The tone, everything. And uh, But these type of, especially horror remakes, are completely, it's unforgivable to me. I don't see the point. Nightmare on Elm Street, was that not good enough? Does it really need to be remade? Making a sequel is one thing, but remaking it? Never thought that would ever happen. I mean, not, honestly, didn't. I don't think anybody who grew up in the 80s uh, as a teenager ever thought Nightmare on Elm Street needed to be remade, but hence, we have a remake. So there you have it. That's all i got to say about that. Uh, stay away from remakes. Please, make more original films. Hollywood, please, try and pick up some films that uh, are stories by screenwriters that are more personal, that don't have to have, uh, it's not a, the latest variation on um, a comic book franchise or anything of that nature. I mean, they did Watchmen. That's good, you know, but they don't need to do another Spider-Man, so there you have it. And uh, next time, I will review Legend of the Lone Ranger, which is technically a semi-remake of the old Clayton Moore Lone Ranger serials. Um, I also forgot to mention Flash Gordon, but there have been so many variations and, and remakes. Legend of the Lone Ranger and Time Rider. I'll review those two films as part of my little series on occasion on looking back at the 1980s of films that I haven't seen that maybe are best left not to be seen. Um, and there you go. So, see you next time. And this is Jerry the Movie signing off.